Bentley, um, who will share what's going on in the superintendent's office. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Hi, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rachel Kelly. Um, I've been the su assistant superintendent for some time, um, and I am serving as our interim superintendent for the next six months. So it's good to see all of you joining this high school council meeting. I just wanted to take a few minutes um, and share some of what's uh, going on from a district level, if you would, and um, some items that are specific to high school I wanna update all of you on. Um, so some of you may have seen um, in the local paper, uh, there was an incident uh, locally at New Rochelle High School with a student who was vaping what he thought was weed and it was laced. And um, thank goodness there was Narcan in the high school uh, to be able to revive him. And I wanted to assure everybody on this call and we will make, we will make sure it's communicated more broadly. We also have Narcan um, in our schools. Um, they, it is throughout the building, uh, health office, district office, and then some counseling psychology offices. Um, so uh, we do have Narcan throughout the building. Let's hope we never have to use it, but we are prepared to if we need to. Um, I wanted to let you all know that we had our second lockdown drill today. Um, it was uh, clearly a drill. Vic Prini, who is our uh, director of security, uh, came on the loudspeaker, kind of walked everyone through the process, although everyone, all the teachers have been trained. Um, they made sure that all protocols were followed. We had um, police officers um, from Bronxville PD join us um, and were part of the process. And we will review that in our safety committee meeting that's scheduled for tomorrow morning, but all went well. Um, doors were locked, everyone followed procedures. So we feel good about that second drill. Uh, we will have two more drills throughout this school year. Uh, we are in the throes of our budget season. Um, you'll see uh, the budget being spoken about not only at our board meetings, but we also have a budget workshop scheduled uh, for the last Saturday of this month. So we'll be going into some greater detail. Uh, we all feel very strongly about making sure that we stay at the cap. Um, and that we also at the same time are ensuring we continue um, our rich programming and making sure that we're serving all of our students' needs. I did want to remind everyone, this is also this season where we are talking to the board about our tenure candidates. You may recall that we sent out in a district newsletter who our candidates are this year, as well as who are our other probationary candidates. And just to remind you, please feel comfortable um, to speak to Anne directly about any high school faculty who are up for tenure. Uh, this year, uh, we have three. We have Aaron Ginsburg in the math department. We have Tom Viviano, who is our high school psychologist. And we have Lisa Azria, who is our special education teacher in our life skills program. In addition, we have two district-wide tenure candidates this year, Brad Ashley, who is our director of technology, as well as Joe Haven, who's our director of athletics. So please feel free to share any feedback. Uh, the board and I certainly do take that into account as we're reviewing all the information. And I want to end by just acknowledging um, that we do have a highly unusual situation going on right now in the high school. Uh, where we did reassign a classroom teacher to home. Uh, we are conducting a thorough and comprehensive investigation, so much so that we have hired um, a independent investigator because we do want to make sure that we are um, conducting, as I said, a, a comprehensive investigation as possible. Um, as you all are well aware, given that it's a personnel matter, I am not at liberty to share any further information at this time. However, I do want to reassure all of you that uh, colleagues in the department stepped up immediately 
to make sure that all of those classes were covered and that there was continuity of instruction. So we are very grateful uh, for those high school teachers who did so. Um, superintendent search. Um, I did not throw my hat in the ring, by the way, just in case that was the elephant in the room. Uh, but the board is continuing um, that search. They seem to be, uh, I'm sure we'll hear an update at the next board meeting next Thursday. Um, my understanding is that they are um, on target, they're following their timeline, um, and they are at this juncture probably narrowed it down to some finalists. So we're all eager to hear how that is going and we should get an update um, shortly. I'm happy to take any questions. I'm unfortunately not gonna be able to stay for the full meeting. So please don't hesitate to ask any questions if you have them. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking over the ship. Um, I am so excited to have three student presenters tonight. Um, I'm going to welcome Molly Bishop, the SFL president first, and then we have um, two of her classmates, Joseph Kutaya and Nick Meyer, who will be presenting second. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Molly Bishop, and I'm the current student faculty legislature or SFL president. The SFL meets every Thursday at lunch in the Learning Commons classroom. Our meetings are open to all students and faculty. And this year we have a six person exec board, including myself. The position of president, vice president, treasurer and secretary are elected at the end of each year. And those polls are open to the whole student body. And as a club, we appoint two co-chairs to help run our event and outreach committees. Each grade has two SFL representatives and a president that are required to come to each meeting. We start by conducting grade reports in which grade representatives relay any important messages to the SFL and vice versa to ensure there's a hub of information available to all governments in the school. We then split into committees, events, and outreach. The outreach primarily brainstorms ideas for our SFL Instagram and our new SFL calendar that will be broadcast in the school soon. Events finds ways to engage the entire student body through our activities. And after that, we end with any of quality of life issues that need to be addressed. In addition to the many elected positions, we do have one of the largest clubs in the school with plenty of tasks to get involved in. This year, we held a Breast Cancer Awareness Day where we raised money for the Ellie Fund, holding a school-wide pink out and selling baked goods, pins, and bracelets. In November, we conducted a competition for the Voice of Bronxville, a point person for morning announcements every day to ensure communication between the SFL and students. And we recently just hosted our holiday holiday three on three basketball tournament. That was a huge success with over 20 teams. And we raised money that will go towards our upcoming candy gram event and field day towards the end of the year. Uh, we have two faculty advisors, Mr. Klerfeld and Ms. hassan Jaikai, and Ms. Myers present at each meeting. We've had a great year so far, and we can't wait to keep continuing the good work. And I'm happy to elaborate on anything I just touched on or answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks so much, Molly. Appreciate it. Um, Okay, if you guys have any questions, you can shoot them into the chat, but Molly, for right now, I don't see any, so thank you. Um, I'm gonna pass the baton over to Joseph and Nick. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Joseph Kutaya, I'm a senior. And I am um, Nick Holmeyer, and I'm also a senior. <laughs> um, we wanted to take a moment to share something very exciting um, that Nick Holmeyer and I have been working on uh, to introduce into the high school. And we're very excited with the progress uh, it's made and very excited that uh, it'll really be starting tomorrow and kind of breaking grounds. So we're very excited about that. It's a program called Mental Health First Aid. Uh, just to start it off, the importance of uh, establishing um, programs focused on mental health is uh, one in five students experience a mental health issue by the age of 18. Um, high school is becoming more stressful um, college, assignments, friends, it's, it's really an age where people are learning who they are and really 
uh, finding out about themselves. So it can be a really stressful time and uh, a time when a lot of people can struggle with uh, with their mental health. And it's it's really important that um, as citizens and as, as members of the school that we really find ways to help um, children and people going through these uh, times in high school. So this is a program called Mental Health First Aid, similar to a uh, CPR training course. Um, it's a program in which professionals come in and they instruct um, high school faculty, teachers, and students um, about mental health, um, you know, what it is, uh, and most importantly, really training friends uh, how to listen, how to be approachable, how to be an active and engaged listener, and how to really present yourself as someone that can listen to your friends and, and have the ability to, you know, understand what's happening and, and having the ability to, to really help them. Um, so just talking about, so really the process is look, ask, listen, um, help them contact an adult if necessary, and really friendship. So the biggest thing about it really is, um, you know, as high school students, um, we're very grateful for the, for the faculty, the great faculty, very approachable, our parents, but most of the time, um, when we feel stressed or something's happening, our friends are really approachable. They're going through the same things as us. So it's very easy. Uh, they're a text or phone call away. So it's really easy. Um, and, you know, while friends are a great resource, as all of us, um, you know, we're growing up and we're maturing and we're learning what it's like to, uh, to really become adults. So it's really great to have some training um, to really understand how to be the best help for someone that needs it. And so the, there's a few steps in this process of implementing this program. And it's, this first starts tomorrow by um, 60 teachers will be trained in youth mental health first aid, um, which is very exciting. We've been in the works for a couple of years, so it's great to actually have a start to this. And at a later date, um, I select a few um, more staff members or the same staff members will be trained, um, which we're, we're still trying to figure that out. So what, what the Youth Mental Health First Aid Training does is it creates a net um, and really a bastion of support in the high school um, of teachers that receive training um, on things to look out for in students so that really we're creating a network um, of people in the high school that you know are not afraid of the word mental health or not afraid of um, the thoughts that come with it with it and are, are educated and, and able to really have those conversations if need be. Um, and have the ability to really be there for each other um, and be really active and engaged listeners. Yeah, and so this year is like a test run of the program, um, and, but our ultimate goal is to have grades uh, 10 through 12, eventually all students be trained in mental health first aid. And so be, create a greater sense of a community throughout the students and faculty alike. And um, so this uh, program starts at grade 10, um, 10 through 12, not nine, and it should be very uh, beneficial for all students. So what it is, so we're bringing in um, professional staff in tomorrow to train um, a wide group of teachers. And as Nick mentioned, later there will be uh, two to three teachers that receive more specialized training. Um, and with that specialized training, what they're able to do is then, so this is like health teachers in the high school, what they're able to do is then teach mental health first aid to students. Um, so we no longer need to bring in um, the people from the mental health first aid um, company every year to do it. What's going to happen is we can actually create this network um, that's really able to continually promote this, this idea of mental health and, and really help with that. So it's really exciting that we're going to be able to do this in our own high school um, with our own teachers and our own staff. And it's going to really uh, grow that Bronxville community. So what the training does, um, it establishes a network of students that are really trained together. So, you know, the, the goal being that 10th grade every year students are taught um, after three years of that you have sophomores, juniors, and seniors that have all received the training, and and teachers and faculty as well. So hopefully, it creates a whole environment of people that aren't afraid of aren't afraid of mental health. They're not afraid, um, you know, to tell a peer that they might be anxious about, about um, something that's going on in their life, or you know, they're not they're not afraid about they're not afraid 
of those feelings and they're really able to to be there for each other and address them in the most mature and appropriate way um and this this will really not only strengthen friendships and ties to the school but really just the whole bronxville community of students and teachers really be, being able to come together and kind of have this commonality and this common appreciation for each other's uh, well-being and uh, mental health. So we went over this. These are these are the types and uh, the programs. So that's that's the uh, that's the main overview of the program. And uh, we're very thankful to the staff uh, to the school that we're going to be able to start that uh, tomorrow with the training of the sixty staff. So that's very exciting. I just wanted to thank Joseph and Nick for bringing this to the school. Um, they presented it to me. And obviously we hear a lot about students going through mental health issues, um, probably in particular coming out of COVID, but just in general. And this was a really proactive approach that I, I think the unique piece, and I, I just feel like it's such a great program that they presented is that it's not just training adults, it's training students. And so I really want to thank them for their persistence and figuring out and explaining it to me and finding people who do the training. And we're thrilled and uh, that tomorrow and next Wednesday, the entire high school faculty will get trained. Parents, I'm sorry, your children have a half day, but I'm sure they're not upset about that for their own mental well-being leading into midterms. <laughs> But that was really the only day we days we could get it done and we wanted to do it as soon as possible. So again, thanks to Joseph and Nick for all your work on this. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, um, Ms. Meyer. For... Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, it sounds like a great program and I can't wait to see how it manifests year after year. I hope you guys kind of keep your finger on it um, and see how it blooms in the next few years. Um, thank you. Um, next up is Aaron Kind from our counseling department. Hello, thank you, Emily. And uh, again, I echo and sentiment. Thank you to Nick and Joseph for uh, introducing us to this program and uh, to everybody's point, like kind of seeing it through, it, um, it's been a little while and I'm glad to uh, see it get off the ground tomorrow. Um, the counseling department's been pretty busy. Um, this past month uh, of December, we sort of wrapped up the first phase of our junior workshops. Uh, so we had three meetings with the junior class um, discussing Maya Learning, which is our new um, college search platform. It's replaced Naviance as of, I'd say, like 12 months ago. Um, and in the second workshop, we actually ran a mock admissions committee. So the students had uh, sample applications and read through them. And then as a group, we kind of discussed who we'd accept and who we would not and why. I think that was a really big hit. And then in the third session, we talked uh, sort of further about sort of college fit and characteristics of college and what to look for when you sort of start to embark on this search or you know, when you're um, in the middle of your search, uh, those will resume in the spring. Um, and in the meantime, we have started meeting with juniors about scheduling for senior year, believe it or not. So just uh, last week, we had a grade wide assembly. All the academic departments presented on courses that are being taught for next year. And um, by now, everybody should uh, have received an invitation with their appointment date and time for the, to meet with their counselor. Uh, their child's counselor. And if you have not, please reach out to your child's counselor, or reach out to me and I can kind of look into that. Um, and then we uh, sort of continue the scheduling family meetings for the next few months. Uh, sophomores are at the beginning of February, ninth graders start at the beginning of March. Um, and so you'll hear a lot about scheduling from me for the next little while, uh, maybe even next session uh, for the um, for, for our meeting, we can kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive like we did last year. I think that was a big hit. Um, and Emily, I can talk to you about that. Uh, also, um, just a little plug for February 28th, we're going to have a sophomore parent event. Uh, we do some push-in lessons for the sophomores about college and career planning or awareness, uh, which we will cover 
those lessons. Uh, we will also be talking about, uh, there are some changes coming to the SAT. So if you have a 10th grader, um, you'll want to try to make that meeting to hear about that. We're also actually, so the people from Bespoke were gracious enough to come and present on that piece. And then we're gonna follow that up with an even deeper explanation of some of the changes that are coming. Cause it's, the SAT is moving online and then they're changing the format. So we're kind of previewing the changes and then we're gonna talk more at length uh, about those changes at a separate meeting. And obviously more information to come on that. And then lastly, um, if your child has Ellen Cohen, or if your child has a Dr. Alyssa Levy, the, the two of them at separate times are taking leave of absence. Um, and so just this is all to say, uh, Ann and I and, and others for that matter are in the process of interviewing replacements. Um, just this week, we are gonna be meeting with uh, potential candidates with some students and parents. And when that is complete, um, families on those two, who has been um, hired and how to get in touch with them and who they are and, and everything you'll need to know about contacting your child your child's leave replacement counselor. Um, in the meantime, if you need anything, I am accessible. I'm, I'll stay on the call for the remainder of it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I hope everybody had a good new year and a good holiday. Nice to see so many familiar faces and, and names. Um, and with that, I will turn it back over to you, Emily. Thanks, Aaron. Um, it's been really nice to hear all the good news trickling in as well. So thanks for your help supporting our kiddos. Um, I don't see Joe on the call. I, I'm guessing Anne's probably going to give the update in a minute. Um, so I'm gonna ask Katrina Ney to speak on behalf of the Brunxel School Foundation. Sure, great, thanks, Emily. Uh, hi, everyone. I have a few updates to pass along tonight. First up is that the Bronxville School Foundation is kicking off its 2023 grant cycle. The foundation is eager to support requests that enable faculty, students, and the school community to lead, innovate, engage the world, and think critically. Uh, any parent, student, teacher, or administrator can apply for a grant. In the past, students and parents have brought us wonderful ideas for new curriculum, technology and equipment, and innovative programming. As you watch your children grow and evolve at the Bronxville School and live out the Bronxville promise every day, you offer a valuable perspective and we invite you to submit any grant ideas you have that will benefit the school community. Uh, in the past, parents have applied for a grant with a student as a co-applicant, so we encourage you to talk about grant ideas with your child. The foundation's mission is to raise community funds in order to provide resources beyond the district's budget for innovative ideas that will have the greatest impact on the most students. We funded grants for the arts, athletics, health and wellness, and all academic disciplines. The foundation's grant application is now open and the deadline for submission is March 1st. Um, the application and summaries of recently approved grants are available on the foundation's website. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to VP of Grants, Jen Lescott, or the executive director of the foundation, Helena McSherry. On a separate note, the foundation will be accepting nominations through February 3rd to fill open positions on its board of directors for the upcoming year. Candidates are village residents who would work with current board members to raise funds and support grants that will enhance educational programs in the Bronxville School District. The foundation's board of directors consists of 30 people, including one member of the Board of Education, the superintendent of schools, and the president-elect of the PTA, and reflects a broad and diverse cross-section of the community. Parents of current students and graduates, alumni, and community members without children are encouraged to express interest. Uh, to express your interest, propose candidates, or learn more about the foundation, please contact Helena McSherry in the foundation office. And finally, just a quick reminder that the foundation's community drive is ongoing and a critical source of the funding that makes our grants program possible. A sincere thank you to all of the school families that have made a donation already. For those of you still considering making a donation, it's not too late. Please help us achieve 100% participation from school families in the special year marking the school centennial. To make a donation, please visit the foundation's website at bronxvilleschoolfoundation.org. Thank you. Thanks so much, Katrina. Um, from my end, I wanted to give a couple quick um, council up reports um, from our subcommittees. Um, 
I see Jen Homeyer is on. I talked to her today. They have a lot of things in the works um, that are exciting. So stay tuned for more information coming out soon. Um, and our arts council had just wrapped all of their winter concerts. They were amazing. If anybody had the chance to attend the concerts in December, um, they're also solo recitals coming up in early March. Um, and NISMA um, is also coming a little bit later in March. So if your child has interest in performing in either of those series of concerts, um, they should reach out to their music teachers. Um, and then also very exciting, Hello Dolly, starring Molly Bishop as Dolly, um, is coming up at the beginning of February. So that's um, February 9th, 10th, and 11th, right before break. Um, each grade level has been busy this fall with individual fundraisers. Um, the PTA has um, supported them um, by pushing out the information and helping them organize the different fundraisers. Um, the ninth grade held a party for the Andrus Center um, where the kids where the Andrews kids came to our school and they had a pizza party and they played games and it was so successful that they're going to try to do it again in the spring. Um, the 10th grade had a successful toy drive with the veterans for Christmas. And um, the 11th grade ran the mock SAT ACT fundraiser in conjunction with Bespoke. They will probably be doing it again in the spring. Um, the, the seniors have had a lot of other things on their plate. So I think they're going to be coming into action um, this winter and fall with their fundraiser. So stay tuned for that. Um, and if anybody has other ideas for PTA events or something that you would like us to support, please reach out to me. Um, I'm all, my phone's always open and I love to hear any new ideas. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it off to Anne to close us. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Um, I just, I will let you know that on behalf of Joe Haven, there's no, specific updates. The winter season is in full swing. Um, I think the biggest issue we have right now is our ski team has no snow. Uh, and we were discussing today that that is an ongoing problem for the last couple of years. So fingers crossed, maybe they get some weather that cooperates. Uh, I just wanted to take a second to thank again, Molly, Nick, and Joseph for joining us today and sharing uh, all this great information about what's going on in the high school. They're probably the best example of, of the high school, um, bringing us wonderful programs, fun, informative, important. And that's really what I try to do is just facilitate our high school students' capacity to propose ideas that they feel are gonna be meaningful and make them happen. Um, so a couple to mention, that happened, I guess, into December, December and in, in moving into January. Um, we had a speaker come in through Speak Sobriety. This is a um, an alum from Suffern High School who has spoken locally, uh, who ended up suffering from addiction. And he speaks about his high school experience and how he ended up addicted to alcohol and drugs. He was an athlete, he had siblings, he was very active at Suffern High School, and he just talks about um, how things spiraled for him. Our health nine, so our entire ninth grade heard him, along with anyone else who's, else who's currently enrolled in health. Um, and thanks to the PTA support through our Be Well group, we were able to then have him meet in small groups with all those students who heard him in breakout sessions. The feedback was incredibly positive. Students mentioned that they would actually, they recommend this going forward for all ninth graders and they said even earlier in the year. So we are definitely gonna um, try to do that in the future as well. Um, I just wanna reiterate what Dr. Kelly mentioned at the very beginning when she spoke um, you may have heard that at New Rochelle High School, a student OD'd in the high school after vaping what they thought was marijuana. It's our understanding from law enforcement that essentially all marijuana is being laced with fentanyl at this point. And I just would recommend you have a conversation with your child or children 
um, about the potential dangers at this point because of um, illicit drugs having, you know, we don't know what is in them. Um, we're looking in February to have an in-person middle school, high school council meeting where we will invite the Maxwell Institute and possibly others. And one of the things they're going to set up, and I recommend all parents come to this, is something called Hidden in Plain Sight. They set up a bedroom, actual bedroom, with some of the things that um, teenagers use to hide drugs and alcohol from their parents. And this is not to scare you, although it is a little scary. It is to inform you so that you can have conversations with your children and keep an eye out for signs of concerning behavior. Um, I think this teen mental health first aid program goes hand in hand with this idea. Um, and we're trying to train our faculty. And as Joseph and Nick mentioned, students, to listen to and understand when their friends are possibly going through mental health or substance abuse issues. This is not about those students getting the, these, not about them treating their friends. It's about just like CPR, is there an issue? How do I get professional help for this person? Um, and so, you know, we feel very strongly that students are stressed, and mental health issues and substance abuse issues arise in an environment of stress. And we wanna make sure we get people help when they need it. So when students come to me with a program like that to propose how important it is, I think it speaks to the fact that they've noticed this amongst their peers. So I just, as far as the laced um, drugs, going back to that, I just really highly recommend you talk to your children about it because it's a very scary situation. I think you all know now that I have a ninth grade daughter and I have these conversations with her. Um, let's see, fun things. As Molly mentioned, we had the holiday holiday. That was a lot of fun, a 3v3 tournament. Um, our freshman transition groups did a gingerbread house decorating contest, which was a lot of fun before break. And um, you know, just trying to intersperse in the freshman transition program, some important, more serious programming with fun programming. Um, coming up, we obviously have midterms, which can be stressful. And I recognize and I reminded faculty that it is in fact only our seniors who have ever taken midterms because of COVID. And last year we had midterms scheduled and then they were canceled because New York State canceled the regions. Just so you know, I've had a lot of students ask me this week, will midterms be canceled? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> um, the regents are planning to have regents exams and we are planning to have midterms. So I just kind of asked faculty, you know, to realize that even the upperclassmen haven't had a lot of experience with this. So they may assume people know how to study or get their notes together or organize themselves, but they might not. Um, so we will work through that. That is a stressful time, but it's also a very important experience for students to have to prepare them, not only for final exams, but for college. Um, how do you prepare for more comprehensive exams? And finally, I did want to mention uh, a little bit about what happened in December um, with our basketball team and an incident we had on Instagram, just so far as it could be an educational moment for all of our students. And I think that really is what it's turned into. So um, Dr. Or Dr. Montesano sent something out about this. I'd just like to describe it a little bit because I think it's easy to misunderstand what happened. Um, there was a boys basketball Instagram account and on the day of the game, like many sports teams do, uh, the account posted, here's the game, the time, the location. Um, that post was accompanied by a song by Kanye West. So it was actually a song that was sung by Rihanna, but happened to have been written by Kanye West. And I don't have an Instagram account, but apparently when that happens, the name of the artist appears on the post. We were playing a Jewish school, the LaFell School. And as I think all of us know, Kanye West has expressed extremely anti-Semitic um, comments lately. And so that post about that game with that, artist was 
was a problem. And a student from the LaFell School actually direct messaged that account and um, the post was immediately removed. Now that came to our attention as the high school administration from the LaFell School and we felt that it needed to be um, taken very seriously uh, immediately. And we, as you all know, from what was sent out, we forfeited the game. We took the opportunity to take the entire team that afternoon to the LaFell School so that on the court, the other team was practicing, our team was able to apologize face-to-face -face in person to their team. Um, I will say that the LaFell School very much appreciated the seriousness with which we took the incident and they felt that um, that face-to-face -face interaction was very positive in moving the two communities forward. I would also say that the way the LaFell School described the post was not that the post was anti-Semitic, but it had anti-Semitic associations because it was posted with that song. So I just want to be clear about that. The post itself did not say anything anti-Semitic. It just happened to be posted with a Kanye West song. Um, I would say that um, this was a learning experience, not just for the team, but for our entire high school. We now have students who run things by me before they post them, are a little bit more sensitive to what they're posting. We regularly discuss with students how careful they need to be when posting on social media. We do that in grade level meetings every year. We do that with all athletic teams at every season. But as we all know, as parents of teenagers, teenagers don't always listen. And when they do, they don't always fully understand what we mean by that. This was an example of what we mean by that. And I think everyone understood that better. Um, and so we're taking that as a learning experience and trying to move forward um, so that we can all be more understanding and uh, think before we post something and realize that um, you know you have to be very careful how your posts may be, may be read. And that in this case, and I will say this is very complicated with Kanye West. I went home that day, talked to my seventh grade son. I said, hey, do you, do you, do you know what's going on with Kanye West? He said, oh yeah, yeah, he's saying these things, you know, they're not good. I said, do you still listen to his music? He said, yeah, his music doesn't have anything to do with that. So I think that's a, it's a complicated thing for kids to pull apart. And again, an opportunity to have a conversation with your children. So I just wanted to share a little bit more about that, the circumstances and how we tried to utilize that as a learning experience. Um, I think that's it for me. I see there might be, um, nope, I don't think there's any questions in the chat, but happy to answer any. Also, uh, feel free to email me or call at any time. Thanks, Emily. Thanks so much, team. Thanks, everybody, for making time tonight. Um, just to reiterate what Ann said, shoot us emails or call with anything. Um, she obviously has a lot more wisdom and knowledge than I do, but I'm happy to put in my uneducated opinions as well. Um, so thank you, guys. appreciate it. And I will see everyone tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you.